Good evening and welcome to today's tropics for June 5th, 2020. Please note I am not a meteorologist and this video is just a collection of my thoughts and opinions about the storm I'm talking about. And for any decision making, please consult National Hurricane Center or your local officials. So today I'm looking at Tropical Storm Cristobal. And right now it is looking a lot more disheveled because it well, has spent two days over land now. And it is now finally emerged and it seems to be, based on the recon data, seems to be generally uh, north of the uh, northwestern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. And uh, it again, it just doesn't look as good. There has been an upper trough that's accompanied the system now, and there's very dry air coming from the north. Uh, it's not as easy to see with visible imagery or with uh, infrared imagery rather than visible imagery. But there have been a lot of uh, uh, outflow boundaries here at the surface, and that means there's dry air that is uh, basically choking thunderstorms and not allowing them to actually uh, form. And actually, yes, earlier today we saw a lot of cumulus clouds coming onto the land and trying to form into uh, into actual thunderstorms, but you could see that a lot of the initiation in this region has failed because the air is just too dry. So. That is why you're seeing the southwestern side just or southwestern side just so dry uh, right now, and uh, out on this side there's upper divergence on the other side of the trough. So this is the divergent region. As a result, it's a lot more moist, and you're getting a much more expansive convection, as you can see here, and uh, also to the east. Uh, on the Yucatan Peninsula, so it's mostly looking like a lopsided system to the east and uh, not really much to the west. Looking at the water vapor, you can pretty much confirm what is very obvious on has been or has been very obvious on visible and infrared imagery, and you can see there's this just big slug of dry air that is tr uh, coming south and starting to wrap into Cristobal, and that's why it's struggling to uh, have convection on the west side again. And there, this is a result of the upper convergence on the uh, west side of a. Uh, a trough here that, or an upper trough here that's been uh, becoming a lot weaker with all this com uh, convection latent heat release. You have a warmer uh, upper atmosphere, which has been weak uh, weakening the upper trough and looks like it'll cut off in the southern uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico or Bay of Campeche and generally weak, and so that doesn't really affect uh, Cristobal as much in the next couple days, but it'll likely struggle with some dry air. Since Cristobal seems to be emerging over water again after uh, its trip in Mexico, some a bit of Guatemala and off the Yucatan Peninsula, there's finally some uh, recon planes that are uh, flying into the storm to see how the structure and the wind speeds are. And this basically confirms what we already knew. There's a wind maximum here in the area of uh, upper divergence where there's actually convection and you can mix down some uh, stronger winds, and there's also a smaller wind maximum uh, in the drier region over quite a bit of uh, to the west of the suspected center based on the bending of the wind here. So this just basically confirms it's a very large, a very broad system as you can see here. It's basically been ex absorbed into that Central American gyre um, that has been in this region for a while, and this uh, with Cristobal in the center of it. So it does look like it is, very, yes, a very broad system that'll take some time to actually uh, be organized, and that means it will uh, it'll intensify a bit slower as it moves north to the Gulf Coast. And with those recon planes, we do have uh, some drops on data now, and it, uh, especially the earlier ones confirmed that there's very dry air at the mid-levels at 500 millibars. There is... Uh, or, uh, Relative humidity as low as not or thirty percent, a bit further to the north, generally almost due west to the center, and it seems that as you get to the south, that mid-level dry air seems to get a lot uh, more beneficial for Cristobal as it's uh, up to ninety-two percent relative humidity at uh, just west of the Yucatan Peninsula. So it does seem that towards the south, the air is a bit moister, so it could be a bit modified, and that's allowing some convection to fire over the eastern part of the Yucatan Peninsula. 
So finally, after a few days of um, much uncertainty as to what uh, Cristobal actually was going to do, it looks like we finally have some higher confidence in what the storm is going to do. It looks like it will, um, or if we, there is a ridge right now that there, to the east that has finally built in and starts steer the system north. You see there's more powerful winds at 500 millibars to the east of the system than the west. So right now it's getting steered to the north at about uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour. And it'll continue to move to the north and maybe a bit to the east before it possibly gets uh, turn a bit to the west in uh, if it is late enough. Depending on if uh, or if it's later, then it might get caught a bit more under the ridge and turn a bit more southeast. But it seems that uh, it'll make landfall in east or in eastern Louisiana at this point. There's some uh, decent model consensus else that says it should move generally north from here and possibly a bit to the east. So we'll have to uh, check these trends as they go. If it wasn't clear in the water vapor imagery, there's also a uh, GFS analysis or forecast for six hours out at 0Z on Saturday. So that is about 40 minutes uh, before I recorded this video. And you can see it comes down here and then it gets bent, uh, bent a bit west because there's a large ridge just because there's a lot of upper divergence in this region allowing convection to fire off in the warm waters. And as a result, you're getting a, a lot of uh, upper heating or heating at the upper levels, and that is causing the uh, the upper trough to weaken. And you, as you can see here, it's pretty much gone by the time uh, 30 hours comes. There is a weak upper level low that's pretty much cut off, but it's in the Bay of Campeche. And uh, Cristobal right now, or at this point, 30 hours out, that is late, or that is Saturday evening if you're going. Or, if you're looking at uh, Eastern Time, as in the Central Gulf, so it's not really being affected a lot by this upper trough slash upper low anymore. So the shear looks like it might get a little low as it approaches the coast, and that means it might be able to start wrapping uh, convection around and moistening the dry mid levels to the east of it or to the west of it. And that would mean the kind of subtropical look it's taken on because of the upper. Uh, the convergence to the east of it, or to the west of it, uh, might uh, look a bit more tropical if it is able to wrap around, and so it might become uh, less of that east-weighted system, more of a slightly east-weighted, but also having weather on the left side with it. And this is indeed what the GFS does before it makes landfall on set, uh, Sunday evening. And it, as you can see here, the mid-level water vapor, it does look um, a bit more symmetrical. There are some dry air pockets, like right around here. But you can see it's generally symmetrical, if not a bit east-weighted. But that is pretty common for systems in early June, because uh, shear and dry air do pretty much rule a lot of the basin at this point. And uh, the... The Euro model agrees with this generally that there will be some wrapping around as shear is slightly lower. Looking at the official National Hurricane Center outlook slash cone, you can see how big uh, Cristobal is right now. You can see there's a very large bubble of uh, tropical storm force winds. And this is due just because the system is so large and sprawling. And you can see, at least right now, it is relatively east-weighted. You have tropical storm forest winds uh, out into the Yucatan Channel, uh, even though the center is all the way west, um, towards the western end of the peninsula. But there isn't really much tropical storm forest wind to the, uh, to the west of the system. It's mostly to the northwest, where there is some modest convection, or at least there was. Uh, the track does look relatively uh, confident, though, that or it will move to the north and possibly into Monday. It will move uh, with a bit to the uh, west as a ridge over the Midwest starts to build in. And this will t try to turn a bit more west uh, before it makes, or potentially before it makes landfall, depending on the time. Might be a bit earlier or later, and that will depend. Uh, that will change the landfall point a bit. Bit because if it is later, it'll move west and vice versa. Uh, but the track uh, forecast is a lot more confident now that there is an actual system to, or is a system to track, and we know what's or what has happened after it's tracked off the uh, off of land. 
And with this system being so large, it's going to have a very large uh, storm surge uh, footprint. It's not going to have very high surge, but it is going to have very expansive surge. Because, uh, well, even looking at the, or, oops, uh, looking at the GFS forecast that you're here, you can just see how like the the system fills up the entire uh, entire like window. And even if you look at the satellite loops, again, the, the entire floater is covered with the circulation. So that means you're going to have a lot of wind, uh, especially as it moves to the north towards the coast. It's going you're going to have a lot of westerly wind, even as far. Uh, east as the west coast of florida so you might have some modest surge like on the order of uh, a couple of feet so it's not a very high surge but there is a little so there might be some flooding uh, at high tide uh also there are some impacts like uh, some rain that might happen as it comes to the uh, north especially towards the east side that is high confidence that the there that there will be some weather on the east uh, eastern side, likely less than the western side. Uh, but yeah, surge and or some modest surge and also some wind or not wind, but also some rain are the biggest threats it seems here with possible flooding. But given that the uh, Cristobal shouldn't become too much stronger than the strong tropical storm. It doesn't look like a high wind will be a major threat, though. If it does, if it is able to become a more tropical-looking system like this and possibly create an inner core, it might be able to become a bit stronger. But the main issue looks to be some surge and some uh, and rain and flooding. Uh, anyway, there isn't too much to talk to in the tropics right now. If you have any comments questions about my video please let me know and thank you for watching